So you may have noticed in my previous videos that this leg isn't moving. And this joint also doesn't change angle. In this video I'm going to fix that and show some footage of it walking, running and crashing. Stick around to see the first ever centennial non-international hexapod race. Welcome to Just Another Maker Channel. It took me about an hour and a half to assemble this mechanically, which at 250 times speed looks like this. Probably the biggest issue I've had is the quality of these servos. I know I keep bringing it up, which is definitely the fault of the super cheap servos. This servo doesn't quite do 180 degrees of travel and just the general cheapness of the servos. But they are all slightly different and I've had a few dead on arrival and a couple that have failed within minutes of use. And that's without even crashing. Now that it's all assembled, you can see my crude wiring from the previous clips is this. Absolute spaghetti. By the way, that's an ESP32 board that I'm using to control this. Mainly because it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the next step of making this remote control should be easy. To combat that mess, I bought some perf board, so I can make this a bit neater. Don't worry, I've sped this part up too. I didn't really have a plan while doing this, I just winged it. And it worked out pretty well except for three issues. One of the key things to remember when wiring something like this, is that you're working on the bottom of the board, and thus everything is reversed. I did this almost perfectly for the ESP32, but somehow when I was thinking about how I'd plug the servos in, it was like this but when I wired them all like this. There are two other mistakes here. This connection ended up being a short to the adjacent pin. And this connection should actually be here, but I ended up fixing them. Unfortunately, my GoPro had decided to test my patience and after several complaints of SD card full being too hot, it didn't even record the next bit, where I actually tidy the wires up. I've just used an 18650 battery to power it, which works okay, though closer to 5 or 6 volts would probably give the servos a bit more power and allow for higher speeds. If anyone does want to replicate this, here is a little schematic for reference of which pins go to which servos. The code is all available on GitHub, link in the description. Welcome to the first centennial non-international hexapod race. In today's lineup, we have Hexia, weighing in at 373 grams. Take a look at the stats, John. That's a machine to fear. Too right, Kev. There will be four heats, each one faster than the last. The course is a two meter straight on carpet. Conditions look good. Here is heat one. And that really is a terrible performance there, Tom. It's probably because these are being shown in reverse order as the fastest heat was recorded first. So expect a lot of broken looking crashes until then. Now for heat two. This should be about 35% faster. And we are off. Not a bad start, but it's found the only obstacle possible and ends early for a DNF. Heat 3. This is where things really start to speed up. Let's hope Hexy can make it. This is looking good so far John. I've spoken too soon. Again defeated by the radiator which is turning out to be the nemesis of the centennial non-international hexapod race. Now for the final heat. This should be four times faster than heat one. Conditions are looking good. Let's get started. This is definitely the best run so far. Look at that hexapod go. Wow, that really was spectacular, Kev. Making it all the way to the two meter mark. Let's get an instant replay. Truly remarkable. 
See you all in a hundred years for the next centennial non-international hexapod race. So as you can see, it actually runs. Well, I would call that a run anyway. At the moment it only runs forwards and backwards. Trying to get left and right working is not practical without remote control because I have to catch it, take the battery out, take the ESP32 out, connect it to the PC, change one thing to test, download it, remount the ESP32, put the battery back in, see what happens. Whereas with a remote control I should be able to try a range of values quickly to see what is and isn't working. That will be in the next video and I suppose I have some servos to fix or replace to get this working again. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, see you in the next one.